Well, we're going to jump right in to the session, get to know some of these amazing songwriters. Um, I'm going to ask them some questions, and then we're going to open up for you to ask questions, because you have them, right? You have questions about yes. songwriting. You do. You, yes, you do. You totally do. Um, so this is an open place for that. As you're listening, um, getting to know, be thinking, write it down. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have each person up here introduce themselves and share with us where they serve um, and maybe just a little snippet about their heart for songwriting and their love for Jesus. Cool. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Vincent Bones. I'm, I'm, I'm from South Africa. Just moved here about two years ago. Um, I serve at Stones Church in the northern side of Kalamazoo. Um, I think songwriting is really, really important for me. Um, I see it this way. It's almost like having um, a sacrifice on the altar and, you know, God um, doesn't come down on an empty altar. So songwriting is that for me. So you have to put some stuff in you so that God can use it. That means word. So you, you know, you, it's, for me, it's close to impossible to write songs if you don't have any word in you. So that's what it's about. My name is Oscar Gamboa, and I'm from <laughs> Dallas, Texas, and I'm an amazing piano player, and I wrote the hit song, Move Your Heart, uh, probably three, four other massive bangers, and uh, pretty successful writer. My name's Caleb, I wrote <laughs> Reckless Love. <so. laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm Caleb Culver. I'm worship prayer pastor here and huge passion for songwriter. I am a songwriter and um, really see building a songwriting culture here as, as one of the most important things I do. And I shared a little bit this morning on Isaiah 42, but, you know, singing the new song that reaches the ends of the earth. And, uh, you know, I, I see it. I see that's my part even in Obviously, I'm fulfilling the Great Commission in, in evangelizing, but also I want to, you know, when I, when I hear that there's a, a nation that, you know, the Gospels never reach them in that tongue, I also think, man, that's a, that's a language that nobody's ever written a worship song in, that Jesus hasn't been glorified in, and so that's my passion for writing and songwriting. My name's, my name's Oscar. I'm with Up Room in Dallas. Uh, my big passion with songwriting is I believe that songs and, and messages are to one. Before I knew about Bill Johnson and Bethel, I knew, I knew about Bethel music. So it's like worship always goes first, with, and it carries a message. So for me, I love, like, that's what happened with our house. You knew about Upper Room before you knew about the culture at Upper Room. And I love houses that carry that. And just having that intention that songwriters carry it first with the pastor, with the local church. And it's for the Lord. And it, it, it creates right theology about God through song and through music. I'm Rachel Culver, and I serve here at Radiant Church in Kalamazoo. And uh, I am more recently passionate about songwriting. And I have just been hit with, I shared this in my breakout, but I get to share it again. I have been hit with um the truth that when God does a new thing, it's time for the people of God to sing a new song. And so we need songwriters in the church that care about songwriting and are recognizing and, and being prophetic and seeing that, wow, God is doing a new thing. It's time to help give the church this language to sing what they've been experiencing and to when God does a new thing, when he uh, breaks through in this moment, when COVID happens and we all are dealing with hopelessness and whatever. We need songs that declare hope. We need songs that are declaring the truth. When God does a new thing, we need to sing a new song. And so as songwriters, it's important to have these new songs coming out. And the old songs are great. We'll always go back to them. But it's time to, to write some new songs. So, Yes, I love that. With the, um, we're just gonna we're just gonna chat about this. But with the focus of even this conference being prayer, such a focus on prayer and the importance of prayer, I'd love to hear from you guys how 
your times in prayer corporately, privately impacts your songwriting, the language, even the word, how that kind of comes up out of that. So just free for all. Anybody that wants to go first. Uh, with prayer, uh, someone told me once, like, the way a song is translated is the way it's birth. So if it's birth from a place of prayer, it's going to be translated with that same essence of relationship and presence. So a lot of our songs, for me personally, is like I'm there on the piano, I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, I'm not, I don't have the greatest voice, but I can be like, oh, like you could kind of sing through it, get some melodies. But it's until I feel God's presence, I'm like, okay, there's something here. You know what I mean? And I pocket it, steward it well. Have it, you know, have a, I, my voice memos are deep with <laughs> ideas, <laughs> terrible ideas, <laughs> great ideas. You know, and it's just a matter of like, I'm I'm not a person that's in a hurry of releasing songs or like trying to get them out. I'm just like I just try to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. It's like, hey, there's a song that there's songs for today. There's songs for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just try to be prayerful. I'm like, I feel like this is for today. We gotta. You know, you got to like, or like, hey, just keep this for another time. I just, that's the way I work with, but I, I love to cultivate at home or even prayer sets. Like I think about, we did an album, Love Note, a lot of those melodies was from prayer set, you know. A lot of it was birthed from there. I just kind of wrote some more stuff outside of it, so. so. Um, okay, so I think just starting with a prayer life, it's, it's really crucial. Well, your individual prayer life and a corporate prayer life, those two things are, are really important because there's some, some ideas that come through an individual prayer life and some stuff you pick up in a corporate prayer situation. So um, I think I was sharing with Caleb, I've been having this X chapter 2 for the past two months, and I was like, I almost fell out of my seat when... I heard, you know, the preacher was preaching with X2 because it's, it's been something that's been um, on my spirit just in regards to, um, to Pentecost because it's not something that is preached about a lot lately, you know, after it happened. So uh, just to realize that, you know, you could have Pentecost every day um, because the Holy Spirit is within you. So it's not, it's not an event anymore. It's something that is part of your life. So um, I think personal prayer is really important. Um, it's easy for people to detect whether you are empty or not. Yeah. You, one thing you cannot do is fool people. <laughs> you can do all the, you know, the, all the jumps, all the backflips with your vocals, but if there's nothing in you, people can tell. Yeah. So I'm always aware um, above what God has given me that I should have something in me. Because yeah. otherwise, I'll be just making noise. Yeah. That's it. I love that. I, I was thinking, too, um, in the prayer set, is there a song that you guys can think of maybe that we know right now um, that might be more common? Um, people maybe more know more about it that start in the prayer room that you can think of off the top of your head? I didn't write the song, but Surrounded came from a prayer set. Uh, this half of my battle, I was in the prayer room. It was me, Joel, my brother, and that's it. And then Elissa was on stage. There's a djembe. They're, they're reading through uh, Elijah. I, I think that's the passage. But whenever, like, the Lord opened up his eyes and saw the, you know, the angels from heaven, when they're surrounded by their enemies, and then she started saying, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. But there was so much faith. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so powerful. Wow. But then that was it. Then Elissa kind of just, like, wrote it. And I was like, but it came from the place of prayer. It, cl- yeah. it came from scripture, and it came from a true, true place. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. And, like, with that, too, I'm so curious. I'm learning as well here, but... Um, so she's, she, that chorus comes to her in a place of prayer, and she, like, leaves that set, and she's just singing that, you know, on her own. Lord's still speaking to her. Next steps for her, we'll go, we'll dip and dive in between practical and spiritual here. But. So what happened was, that was just in a, so his brother was prayer leading at the time, um, and then at, during, there was a season at Upper Room that we just experienced revival, the Lord was present, um, 
and then Miller was preaching about the blood. It's like, yeah, if the blood can speak, the blood can sing. He goes, tell you, let's uh, sing what the blood's speaking right now. And then his brother texted him saying, hey, sir, this is how I fought my battles. <laughs> so Lisa looks at me and just turn off the click. And she starts singing the song. And that's the moment that you see, like, the spontaneous moment. It was a already, already written song from a place of prayer in her Monday 12th noon set. Yeah. And then she felt led to sing it during a place of corporate prayer. And I was like, it was really, really powerful. And, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was from the Lord, 100%. Wow. Yeah. And then practically she, it was funny because then she sent out a group text. And it's like, hey, I got this song. Does anyone want to write it? I was in the group text. No one responded. So she ended up writing it herself. Uh, <laughs> no, talk, hey, talk the, about The power that. of following up on text messages right there. Talk about that, though. <laughs> Leave your read receipts on, read receipts on. <laughs> the follow up. And then she wrote it. I really believe it was her heart. You know, I believe in a songwriting session like, if I'm not supposed to be there, I'm not supposed to be there. Yeah. If I'm supposed to be there, I'm supposed to be there. I don't live in regret. I was like, oh, I should have texted. I should have, mm-hmm. could have. Mm-hmm. That world is a bad world to live in. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like it, it was her song. It was meant to be, and she, she wrote it from start to finish. Wow. Yeah, and even I, I love that part of the story. I, I hadn't heard that before, but just that she stuck with it. I think so often songwriters, too, want to share, bring people in on co-writing, and then um, you present, like, hey, here's my song, so I've been working on this chorus, and it's like crickets. It's like, and then you kind of get into a place of like, Ooh, maybe it's crap, maybe that's bad, maybe that didn't work out. And so can you, any of you speak into that too, like your experience with that more? Yeah. Uh, I think for me, I think the first thing um, is to just to admit to yourself that not everybody's going to like your ideas. Maybe at first, um, well, one thing I believe, you know, sometimes some ideas catches up with people, so you got to believe in that idea enough to carry it. Um, you, you, you can't just stop because, you know, somebody's not catching it yet. Maybe they'll catch it later, but you need to work it if they're not willing to work it at that moment. Well, that's what I've experienced. Like most of the stuff that, that I've written, uh, uh, people will say, okay, um, you know, just listen to it and then... Um, that's kind of a blue tick you. But then I, like I, if I have an idea of me, I can't sleep. That's, well, that's the type of person, well, I sleep late anyway. So I'll work, work on it. <laughs> yeah, I sleep like two every morning. So I'll work on it until it's a full idea. And most of the time, people that you wanted to work with, when they hear the full thing that you were hearing the first time, they jump on the idea. So you got to believe in your idea and don't rely on somebody else believing on, in, on that idea for you because that's going to discourage you quicker. <clears throat> yeah, a uh, couple thoughts on that. I mean, I, I think you have to start with the why anyway, and I, I feel like my what changed in my songwriting was my, my why I felt like really shifted from wanting to write great songs or wanting to write great songs with people. And, and honestly, I, I, don't, I don't think this is bad, wanting to write songs for the body of Christ. And I had to learn the just internally of like, it's it becomes weird whenever your goal is for other people to hear and or sing that song. If that becomes, those things aren't bad in of themselves, but if it's the why, then it, it will put a world of pressure on you and you will have so much disappointment when other people don't receive it or accept it, and when the why just shifts to, this is my own, this is my offering to the Lord. And he sees it as a success if I do it with all of my heart to the best of my ability and complete the thing he's given me, then I have, I have a freedom, and it's like, man, it's cool if it speaks to somebody else, and if it doesn't, you know, cool. Like, the, that, that why, to me, helps me because I, I felt like I, for a long time I'd get an idea and I'd be like, oh man, I need to turn this into like a corporate worship song. And so I'd have all these like boundaries of like, okay, I can't sing this and I don't want to do this and whatever because I'm thinking of that first. And I, you know, I, I believe a couple of things. I mean, one, I think the songs themselves want to be written and they have a, th- there's just something that the song needs to say. And a lot of times like, I separate praise and worship music, and we call it, because in, in my mind, anything that 
brings glory to the Lord is worship music. And so if it glorifies him, it is worship. Um, but then praise, an expression of praise in the corporate body, and that's, that's what we typically think of when we talk of worship. And so three to probably, probably, I write probably five worship songs or non-praise songs to every one praise song because those were all songs that I would try to fit into this corporate worship model and formula and, and try to jam it in there. And, and a lot of times it was like, this doesn't work. Like, this is weird. Like, the Lord gave you this as a word, like he was speaking to you. And so just write it as it is. And if the goal is just worship and just to offer it to him, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, I just, I have, you know, probably a hundred songs that I've written that will never be recorded or never be sung corporately in worship. But it was like, I took that idea and yeah. I just, I just, tried to I just tried to finish it like I just made a commitment like an inner commitment like hey I'm gonna start finishing songs and I I go through like my my notes and if I have ideas and whatever I'll just finish it and sometimes it's like I know it's not even great or whatever but it's like I'll finish it and move on and I'm, I'm working the discipline the, the discipline of just being faithful and obedient with what I've been given and working that muscle and to me like the pressure's off when I start with a why of like this is just worship to him and it's like I just have songs that are just my journal and it's just my walk with the Lord and it's sweet and yeah. some of them maybe God wants to use and some don't but it's not it's not the goal and so the pressure's off so I'll just finish it without trying to you know it's like oh no I gotta find the perfect thing and I felt like then you know I'd be quick to shoot down people's ideas on my songs because I'm like, no, it's got to be this because I have some grand vision. And it's, it's like, man, I just need to release that and give that to the Lord. And that actually gave me the freedom to finish a lot of songs. Like I got a lot better at finishing songs just when I like settled the why. So it's like, no, this is just my worship to the Lord. I'm just, I'm a songwriter. That's who the Lord created me to be. It's one of the primary things I do here because he, I love it, and it's part of my journey, and it's my journals and intimacy with him, and beyond that, whatever. And that freedom has just helped me actually take those things from ideas to, like, finishing them for what they are, and, you know. Yeah. And then I, I have people like Oscar that always really help me, like, because I just want to get weird and whatever, and he's like, oh, man, I like that, but what if we don't talk about, like, the dead people in this song? I'm like, fine, Oscar. <laughs> We won't talk about Psalm 110 and the dead bodies piling up. So, no. But I do. I, I I love your Oscar has such a heart to serve the church, and he's just he just has this heart and posture, and has nothing to do with my point. But just wanted to shout you out for that. I really appreciate that. But I think that's a good segue too with um, co-writing and submit mutual submission. I've heard you talk on this before, Oscar, but I'd, I'd love for you to even share that. The um, upper room really carries this idea of mutual submission that it's like a fire off, you know, phrase for me. I think about and how you guys do that and what that really means and the value of what that means to you guys. For sure. I think with a songwriting session, you kind of know if you're leading it or if you're not, you know. <laughs> and if you don't know that, you're probably not leading <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, just, just letting you know. Yeah. My, it's, it's better to be quiet and serve than, I, mean, I have a friend, he's, <laughs> I'll just tell a funny story real quick. He, uh, I mean, he's a, one of the best cello players I've met in my life. Incredible cello player, like best melodies. Him and his wife, I think, you yeah, might, might know him. He, like they play all the, all the time. And he writes a little bit. He's like, oh man, I was, I was going to a Nashville riot in Spanish. Um, and I was like, just come, whatever. Like I don't know if, how many songs you're in, but it's a risk, whatever. Just come. But he wanted to write a fast song. And every single writing session, he told the producer, "Give me your phone on the floor." You know, and I was like. I had a time I was like, hey, man, just serve. <laughs> like, be aware that maybe it's better for you to come and serve who's ever <laughs> leading the right. <laughs> so just being aware, just self-awareness awareness is key, you know, because you want to, you know, like for me, I, like I kind of sense what the Lord's doing in a right, you know what I mean? I think a right, if we gather together for two hours and you just express your heart to each other, to the Lord, but you didn't write a song, I'm like, that's still a successful ride. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's not really an end goal. But for me, I'm like, man, someone's expressing their what the Lord's doing in their heart, in their church. You know, they're really open, opening up scripture. I'm like, I want to submit, mutually submit to what they're doing because then I can receive and serve it well. Yeah. And it's no longer, uh, hey, I think, I think your melody is really bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> or maybe we should, because I, I remember I was in this right, and again, I'm not going to say any names. 
Because <laughs> I was in this right, and I was like, <laughs> and it's like, we're there. Some girl's like, yeah, I got this, this chorus. It was just a great chorus. And then I was trying to serve it, and then there's another guy who's like, no, let's, what about this? What about this? And then we, we ended up scratching everything three times. To the very end, she's like, I think I got this chorus again. And then the guy was like, yes, but we had five minutes, and we couldn't do anything with it, you know? So it's just being really aware of, like, how can I serve? And there'll be moments when you're leading, leading it, and it's like, I really believe what you sow is what you reap. You know, if you're, it's like, there's been moments I'm like, I was really leading something, and it's like people came and serve it, you know? So it's like just being aware of it. It's like mutual submission. It, you're never going to be the chief all the time, you know, just being aware of it. Just uh, the language there too. Like I, I, I always say like who carries the burden of the song, and I try to respect that. And a lot of times it's if someone's coming in with that burden, then my mindset is that now I'm serving and supporting that burden. And uh, you know that that was that was what happened with with reckless love. Corey had that phrase, "Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending reckless love of God." Got the melody in a dream. And he texted me that morning. He's like, dude, I had this dream. And because we had talked about that phrase, it's like, we should go write. And we came and we wrote pretty much the rest of the song. And I went in knowing it was like, he's kind of taking lead on some of the ideas because it's like, okay, you've had this phrase the Lord gave you a long time. And now the Lord initiated with the melody. You're inviting me into this to help write it and shape it. I'm here to serve that. And I, I know, like, sometimes it's, I know I have that burden, and I'm inviting people in to serve that, and, and yeah, <laughs> I love the language. You're so, you're so smiley and nice, so it's, it works so well, too, when you're like, there's a leader in the room, and if you don't know who the leader is, it's not you. <laughs> That's so amazing. But I, I think, like, it, in all things, like, sometimes... It, it's actually not helpful, like, our idea of, like, this unity is, like, a leaderless thing. It's, like, everybody's doing the exact same thing and looks the same and are the same. It's the world's idea of unity that's broken because authority and serving, the way the kingdom works, uh, is, is it comes through with the songwriting as well. And so, like you said, having that awareness of, like, I'm not here to try to get my name on something or whatever. I'm just here to serve the burden. There's a burden called the word of the Lord that this song or this chorus or this phrase or idea carries. And I'm serving it or other people are helping serve, you know, what, what the Lord has given. And I, I, I honestly, I think that helps so much um, in that co-writing context. Yeah, just, just to, two seconds. I think just to support that is... Uh, what I basically based my experiences on is it's the same burden that preachers have. Uh, preachers that do well is preachers that don't have um, the pressure to to almost like watch the word, you know, being performed. Preachers that preaches the word and let it and let the Holy Spirit do the the, yeah. the work. So the same thing with songwriters. Um, what makes you feel the pressure is because you you want to take the responsibility of the impact of what you wrote. So you should, especially if you're writing from, 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 uh, from God's perspective, you should let God do that for you. Because we have that pressure that because you love the melody, you, you want it to work in everybody's, you know, people must love it. But what's really key is you obey what God is giving you and you let it go. So he can do, you know, God do much better with it than you. I love that, that open-handedness. Have any of you in full vulnerability had a hard time ever in moments where you're like, I can't let go of this melody, but then after some time, never? Oh, yeah. oh I thought you were like, no. <laughs> or like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an A on the Enneagram, and so <laughs> I have a unhealthy obsession with needing and wanting to control everything in my life. Uh, <laughs> and so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's it like such a long journey of me just like wanting to make songs work and force them, and and because I I do have a leadership gift to move things forward, and I do think like you know one of the things I'm 
I'm, I love finishing songs, and I can come in and take a song that's 50% and get it to the finish line. That's like one of my skills, and I love doing that. But I, so often it's like because the why was off, I'm just trying to force, 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 force. And you just have to learn through the pain of disappointment and, and being like, man, like just failing so many times. And, and right, it's so funny. Like, I mean, I've been on both sides of it. I've been on songs that I was like, man, I was like convinced. I was like, this song is going to like blow up and be huge. <laughs> and, and it's just like nothing. And, and I've written songs that I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. That, I don't think that's a good song. And that the Lord put on the map way beyond what I could have imagined. And I'm just like, man, this is, I'm not as like wise and I'm, I'm not as smart as I realize. Like God just breathes on songs and messages and, and we're just the vessel and, and I don't know why. And I, I'm just done figuring it out and I'm just done caring too. Like I'm just, I'm not searching for that. It's like I went from, and even just if you talk about like, you know, who are we trying to serve? Like I've, I've, gone from a okay what song is going to resonate with the globe like I, I just don't think that way anymore I'm, I'm more of like what's God doing in Kalamazoo and how do I capture the sound of that and give language to the people that are in my community yes. like and, and it's like hey it, our music is now an overflow it's like if God wants to use that outside our context awesome yeah. but if not that's fine. I'm just yes. trying to say yes and give articulation to what God is doing. And, but that, 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 that was a legit, to, to where I'm at in my heart, I mean, it was probably a legit like 10 to 15 year journey of just disappointment and trying to force things and disappointment and like some success. And then when the success happens, you realize you're disappointed because it doesn't fit. It's not that great. Like a song like Going Global does nothing to satisfy you, doesn't make God any more impressed with you, doesn't change any aspect about your life, doesn't make you any more holy. <laughs> it, it's just, he just decided to use something, and, and you have to experience those disappointments to then realize, like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. it's about worship, and it's about the Lord. It's like, if someone had told me that, it's like, you idiot, people have told you that your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love that quickly, too. I'd love to talk on it just because we even touched on it in prayer about how you know, the Lord's coming for the reward of his suffering in our cities, and our cities matter, and I think all of you guys carry that burden that the song is for my city, and I would love for you to speak on what the Lord has spoken to you about that specifically, like our city, where we're at, and just share, just overflow your heart um, of what he's spoken to you and that burden, that calling, really. Yeah. You want to share Rachel? Rachel? <laughs> I thought I was going to get away with the whole time and not sharing. <laughs> I was nodding and doing all the things. Okay, so I, um, I, I'm not really going to answer the question, but I, <laughs> so I, but I did want to share. I, it kind of does. So um, in this building, there's a space that we call the upper room, and it was our prayer room for a long time before we um, moved our prayer room downtown. And Caleb and I were uh, leading some prayer sets a few years ago, and I saw this picture over our city, it so it's kind of it about this, um, and I, I saw clouds that were over our city that were, that were um, not the like rain clouds of revival, but it was actually the like the clouds of heaviness and discouragement and of confusion, and I saw this picture out this tiny little window of that room, and I, I just saw the clouds dissipating, and I had that phrase, um, and I had this picture, and we just began to kind of sing this chorus about the clouds dissipating, and, and for me, it was this vision of over our city, over the people in our city, over our church, these clouds of despair and clouds of confusion and, and, and clouds of hopelessness just being taken away in a moment and joy and, and love and the presence of God filling that space. Um, and so I, to answer your question, like, I don't even remember the question, but I felt, I felt led to say, like, the, um, in the place of prayer and in the place of songwriting and all of that, having, you know, you guys are leaders. You guys are leading worship 
in your churches, your, your, the Lord wants to give you language for your people. He wants to give you language for your city. And so I think so many times, you know, we're like, okay, we got to like write a song. But like, I think we start with prayer and what, God, what are you saying in my city? What are you saying to my church? And, and trusting the Lord too, that like this, he's speaking to you. You're, you're one of the shepherds at your church. You're the worship pastor. You're the worship leader. You're the, you're the vocalist who's been showing up faithfully for five years and you're starting to get some phrases of what God is doing. And, um, so sing, sing those out in the place of prayer in the place of worship, and then, you know, develop it from there. But that's just kind of a fun story. Yeah, I think for us, like, I, I care about the messages that our house is carrying. You know, for a long time, like Maranatha, the return of the Lord, has been a theme in our home for a very long time. But also before that, it was like worship, 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 worship. You know, worship is about him, about him. So coming in as a songwriter, you're like, okay, like, you want to write songs. Not that there wasn't grace to write prophetic prophetic songs, but it was just what the culture had. You know, and I just, I submitted to it. But when you... I think when you uh, honor a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And I think if you can honor the word of the house, you start to receive the burden of the house. Because yeah. um, for me, I was like, the return of the Lord, like I knew about it. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, it's a little scary. Like, I kind of like to avoid it a little bit. I love Jesus, but, you know, mm-hmm. revelation, you know. <laughs> Just being on- I'm being <laughs> honest. But then I remember, like, during COVID, we, we were in a, we didn't really do, like, series but we talked about revelation into like the first five chapters and i was like i was like wow i remember re- re- reading revelation 19 about the marriage supper of the lamb i was like this is really powerful i was like and it's joyful and hopeful i remember we're writing i think like uh we're there and i think it was it's when we were all getting ready it was me abby and naomi from maverick and I was like, I just I kind of shared my heart. I was like, I just feel like we've been writing. I've had, I never knew about the return of the Lord, but it's, I want, I want to write a song about it's like celebratory, about the return. Yeah. And I was like, what in a, I was just saying that. And then I think Naomi finished up, like to be invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb to come and worship Him. And I think the best songs are the songs that people can connect to with a burn. Like you can join a message, and then it's like you don't know who wrote what, but you know everyone contributed. You know, yeah. have you ever felt that before? Yeah. You're like. It's like, who wrote what? You kind of have an idea, but it's like, it just kind of just kind of all came out. And it's like in 30 minutes, you're like, we're done? Yeah. <laughs> that's it? You know what I mean? But that's the most beautiful parts. I just, yeah. it's like being able to receive that uh, within your little community and like being able to serve it. At the same time, you also carry a personal message. You don't want to forsake that either. You know, it's like the Lord has songs for you that are for you. I love what Caleb said, just write for you as well, you know, because you're, you're it's like, yeah, I have a gifting, but it's also like I have an expression that's the Lord wants to hear my song, yeah. Yeah. wants to hear my yeah. my melodies, you know. And it's like a lot of people are just servants, you know, and they're great. But it's like to those people, I I can be that role. But the Lord's been the last years like, hey, you, you got something in you. It's mm. just, you know, it's deeper. And it's like being able to being able to like channel that correctly. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, I was thinking too, Caleb, about New Rain, and like the, I would love for you to share even just quickly that connection. Pastor Lee kind of alluded to it, even yeah. talking last night in connection to what you're saying, the word of the Lord of the house, and so. Yeah, yeah I, I just have a conviction too of like, man, the, the pastor, the leader, I mean, he's kind of the chief worship leader, and so he's setting language, and so Lee and I will connect you know, a couple times a year, and I'll just ask him, what do you feel like the Lord's saying and doing? What are the themes? And, uh, and I'll write songs, you know, based on those, those themes. And uh, so that, the pastor really told, told y'all, like, he, he got woken up with a dream, and the Lord said, if there will be prayer in my house, there will be praise in the streets. And so we, we just started praying that, and um, uh, I was taking that in a different prayer meeting, and Richard, um, who led this morning, was was singing, and I started praying the verses of New Rain, you know, what's the melody of heaven's song? Like, Lord, if there's a scroll written over Kalamazoo, then what is on that scroll? And I'm like, what would it look like to be a city that's, 
that's restored to what God's original purposes were. And we were just praying into that. And Richard, you know, he just came up and he's like, oh, I wish you'd write around that, right? And I'm like, yeah, okay, man. Uh, but, but, I mean, he was like, he was like man, I, I feel the Lord on that. And so we, we sat down and we actually prayed. We were praying for the city. What are the things that the Lord's saying? And the, the, the song we wrote, you know, New Rain, the song that came out of that, you know, was just a, a song of intercession for our city. And we wrote the first half of it, too. And then I was in uh, Ionia at a prophetic presbytery. And uh, I already had that melody that for the bridge that I've been playing and, and singing that kind of came out in a similar revival, praying for a revival. And all of a sudden, the Lord just kind of gave me language and articulation to kind of finish that. And then it, it, it was really cool to see because it's... It, it, you know, in our house, it's been able to become this anthem, and the people think of that reality of it being sticky, and, and, and people will sing and say that. If there's prayer in my house, there'll be praise in the streets, and that's the thing in songwriting. I know that if Lee just shares that dream, just the reality is probably 30 people remember it, and just <laughs> the rest yeah. move on, but if, but if I can sing that as a song, it'll tattoo on people's hearts. It's like, like the language of, of David's life. The, the, the journal language of what we know about David, we only know because of the songs he wrote. Yeah. If he didn't write any songs, we, wouldn't, we would know the story of David without knowing the heart language. And it was the song that, that did that. And so that's why I think just when we're writing songs as a house and for the house, like I'm, I'm like, man, we are modern day scribes. Like, you know, our pastors are leading and then you had people, their job was to scribe what was happening so that it could be remembered, so that they could read it in the towns. And so I think the, the songwriters, we're the modern day scribes of like, our pastors are leading and getting this language. And then we are taking that and put it into a form that everyone will be able to remember. And it's like, man, what a gift. And so, you know, it's great, too, because it's like, man, this song is, it's not even my revelation. I got to, like, draft off someone else. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Vincent, what about your heart? Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of new in the city. But um, I think what's really proper for me to say is, is what God has been doing in my life in terms of, okay, let me start it this way. So I'm from a big city. I'm from Johannesburg, which is a big, big city. It's probably, let's say, the size of Chicago. Um, so years back, God told me to move to a small town uh, in, in uh, Durban. Um, and it was a strange, strange um, instruction. He said, I must move to a small town because he's, got, he's getting ready to put me in front of the whole country. That was the message. So I obeyed. I moved to a small town. Um, I'm saying this for a reason. So I moved to a small town. From that small town, I won South African Idols 2014. Uh, just following God's instructions. So same thing happened to me coming here. Um, well, it's just in my life. You know, everybody's got... You know, God has a way of putting me in a city that seems small to me. But because of what happened the first time, I know something is coming out of Kalamazoo. And I'm very sensitive to it. I'm really like right now, because we always speak, I, I know it. I can sense it every day. Um, that God is, whether you're from here or you, you know, coming from outside, God is just, it's like a pot. God is putting different uh, uh, ingredients together so that something comes out of Kalamazoo. So I'm really excited for it. Awesome. Come on. Thank you so much, guys, for that. I think I'd love to open up for Q&A really quickly if you guys have any questions. Yeah, girl, I knew you were going to be ready with a question. <laughs> So how has your, what is your songwriting style? How has it changed over time, if it has changed over time? Uh, yeah, I, I, I love just, just, I just enjoy writing in general. And so it's kind of like, I, 
I write for fun. It's not like everything is like some spiritual pressure that I put on myself for what I produce or whatever. And so because of that, like whether that's silly songs with my daughter that we're kind of playing or like stupid parody jokes, whatever, like it's all kind of uh, writing. And um, I think I think the only thing that's really shifted is just over time, um, I've just become freer in my writing where it's like I'm not – you know, I, I don't have to put myself in a specific box of like, okay, this is my power alley or my style or whatever. Like my, my heart is for praise. And so that's, that's really what I want to be able to, to write. But, but I try to write the feel based on what that prophetic theme is. Before I'd be like, I really like this style of music. Or I really think this music is really cool. And so I'm going to try to write a song that sounds cool like that. And I feel like that's just kind of an immature way to, to view songwriting, not that, not that it's bad to notice what makes you come alive, but to me now I hear like a, a, maybe a genre or a way of singing a song, I'm like, well, that's not really my style. It's like, well, the song kind of like pulls it out or demands it, you know, like, the, like we sung the song Lion, uh, you know, last night, Vincent led us. Um, and that's one of those songs, it's like you, you kind of have to be Vincent to lead it. It's like, <laughs> it's, like you, it's hard to be in like a 50-member church with an acoustic and just be like, Rah! just like, Rah! it's just like, it, 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 it's a song, it's like, man, I don't think they were trying to write a genre. It's like they were just trying to release this roar, and that song came out. It's like, um, and so I think I've, I've just gotten looser and freer where I'll have some stuff and be like, man, that's kind of almost like a country song and other stuff too that like, okay, that more sounds like straight worship or another thing that might be pop. And, yeah. and it's just like, it kind of, I just have gotten freer in that style and just kind of enjoyed. And, and I, I've just become less of a hater. Like I used to be like, I only like that kind of music. And I kind of like, man, I, I don't really, I think all genre styles, whatever can be powerful and useful. And I've tried to judge people less and, I like country music now. I like really like country music, which is weird. I used to make fun of it, but that was a great question. Yes, uh, yes. How do you start a culture of songwriting at your church? I think gathering some friends and writing just a uh, space and time, you know? Like one, creating space and time to write. I think like Joel's back there, hello everyone. He's back there. Hi Joel. <laughs> we write all the time, you know, but it's like he sends me a calendar invite, write with Joel, 215 to 309, you know, like, it's cause, I mean, it's, it's like being intentional with that. I think if, if you have worship, if you're a worship pastor and you have worship leaders under you, like just cr- creating songwriting, create space. You know, maybe once a quarter, have a retreat where you go and pray and worship and write songs. You know, like being intentional with that. And as a as a worship, are you a worship pastor? Yeah. And as a worship pastor, it's like kind of go easy. You kind of you lead the way. You know, culture is created by the way you lead, not and then culture is sustained by the way you speak, the, the language that you put. So it's like if you want to create a, a culture of songwriting, you need to start songwriting with your people. And be very consistent. If and no one shows up, it's only you still write. That's yeah. good. You know, that's the way you create culture. So it's like after some time, you're like, in a year, you're like, oh, wow, I don't have to be the one texting everyone. It's like people are doing it. But it's like the initial grind of it, it's like you show up. If it, Create a time. Create a space. Invite people. Yep. People will come. People will not maybe not come sometimes. But you, you show up every time. And then people are like, oh, he really, he really means this. And then. You start to create that culture. I'm pretty disorganized, so you got the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> so practical steps for organizing all the things. For yeah, I, a few practicals. One, the the I, I love the shared note. On, uh, well, one, get an iPhone. Don't be, <laughs> don't write on a Droid. No one wants to write with you, uh, and no one wants to hear what you have to say, including God. If you have a Droid, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just made so many enemies. But on the, you can the shared note app. You can post 
uh, the voice message at top, yeah. lyrics below it, and then share it so multiple people can see it and edit it. And that you can do it on Google Docs or whatever. I just like the note. I just like the notes app because of accessibility, how easy it is to share. And for me, like um, you know, I, I want a recording of wherever we're at, and then all the lyrics like laid out. And whenever you know, I'll do song feedback for a lot of people, and like, hey, you can listen to the song, give me feedback, and I tell them like, I won't give you feedback until you put it on a on a note. Put it at the top, write the lyrics below it so, so we can kind of see it and, and edit it and in sections. And to me, like, you kind of have like a song template, so to speak, where it's like, okay, this is, this is the idea that we have for the verse or the verses. This is the flow or the pattern that could be the rhyme scheme. Uh, you know, that could be, you know, okay, we do kind of four lines and then the chorus is four lines. And what, what I just call the verse template, you know, which a lot of times goes in patterns of two, four, or eight. And then um, once we kind of have that in place, well, now we can kind of write a lot of stuff over it. A lot of times, I'll, most songs I write, I probably write five or six different verses to. Like I'll actually write a lot of verses. And, and then we'll kind of start with a lot. I like throwing everything against the wall and then seeing what sticks. And so I just, truly, because I'd rather have a lot and then, and then, okay, let's take away or let's simplify you know, rather than trying to, I, I feel like a lot of times we try to stretch, like we have like half of a good song, but we try to stretch it to make, to be like a full song. And, uh, you know, I live by the law of all killer, no filler in songwriting. Like, don't put a filler line in there. If it doesn't need to be said, cut it out. Like, you can't, you can't polish a turd. Like, if, if you have an, another spiritual law, like... We, we were like, well, if this is gold and we just, like, you know, polish up this other part that's a turd, it's like, no, no, let's just cut it all away and, and simplify it. So once we have that template, then it's like, okay, what, is the, what are the themes, prophetically what's there, and, and, you know, I'll have the app there, and then, you know, I'll, I might have in my phone, I might use the thesaurus, or I might, you know, look up... A lot of times, my you know my Bible app too, where I'm cross-referencing like crazy, because I'm like, once we find the theme, I'm like, all right, I want to pull like five or six scriptures up. And so a lot of times, at the bottom of the song I'm writing, I have a bunch of scriptures just, boom, 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 and then different ideas that I can pull from. And now when I share that note with somebody else, and like, hey, what what do you think? They're actually look, scrolling down and be like, dude. That scripture, or the, man, right at the bottom, you wrote this phrase, and I'm trying to think of a. Uh, example of that I have a few of those where it's like hey this this phrase is awesome why isn't this in this song like okay cool and so that person can now see like I can share a note and in 10 seconds Oscar can hear what I'm thinking singing he can see the pattern and then he has all of my kind of brain scramble thought thoughts beneath and that's that to me has just kind of been the most helpful like practical system to like quickly capture and record and so my notes and voice memos there's just ideas everywhere but but that I try to keep it in that system so that you know there's enough clarity to that everyone can kind of jump in on I don't know if anyone else has any practical That's a really good question. I mean, you have to find inspiration. You know, like, like for us, Bethel was a really big inspiration. Early on, we sounded just like them. The way you learn to speak is by imitating, but you can't call that yours. I want to be really clear. Like, when you imitate, don't call it yours. You're imitating. You're growing. Huh. Um, but from there, it starts to seep into stuff. You know, I think for our sound, like we use a lot of gospel breakdowns. We love the simple breakdown stuff. We do it all the time. Um, but it's like, you just kind of, and with prayer, we have prayer sets, which it's like, we have two hours to like, you know, to kind of experiment and grow. You know, we are, we're a church that loves risk. So it's like, I might bring my synthesizer sometimes and it might stick, it might not stick, but when it sticks, he starts to see a development of a sound. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, cause for me, I love, I mean, I have kind of my fundamentals that I love to keep, but then like anything also like, there's no such thing as a with production, because that's kind of the role you're talking about, there's no such thing as a wrong idea. My older brother plays guitar, like, there's moments I'm like, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> I'm like, what is he, what the heck? 
but he's such a creative, but then you're like, next thing you're like, oh, I've never heard of it before. Yeah. It sounds like nothing I've heard before. And I'm like, that's kind of what you need to do. So you, you need to, so I took jazz lessons for a season, um, and he taught me like the A's and B's, the fundamentals of music, and at my last lesson, he's like, I want you to forget everything. And I was like, what? <laughs> I want you to forget everything, because he's like, you're going to sound like me. Yeah. And I was like, mm. so same thing with music, like if you, if you feel like you're sounding like something else, or you feel like you're sounding like a whatever, it's like bring a new element in, maybe sit down and just fumble, you know, you kind of like be intentional, but kind of like... You know, there's so many there's so many melodies and parts and things that I've just I've fumbled my way into it. I just kept scrolling. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Let me add this. Let me add this. Let me add this. And then you're like, it sounds different. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, we want to over here. What we usually do is we come down on a, on a chorus. Let's actually don't come down. Yeah. Oh, we always start with a small verse. Let's. Not, what if we just come in all the way in? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like thinking that way. Yeah. And then is you're gonna fail. And you're going to be like, what the heck? That's so weird. But it's always better when you're like, wow, that, I don't know why that yeah. felt right. Yeah, it's, it's a journey. It's good. So thanks for Maybe do two more questions. Yeah, go ahead. Jenny, right? Yes. How do you plan to map? I'll pull that that song. I think you're talking about Look to You. Um, it has kind of that big instrumental. And that was actually the song Rachel was talking about that, that started in the upper room. I was kind of playing the chorus melody line. Rachel sung over it. And then she just started declaring, uh, I can see the clouds dissipating, and just kind of this prophetic declaration. Um, and we play that in a, in a prayer set. And uh, Regan Cruz, who's lived here for a number of years, awesome prophetic musician, just Rachel singing that, and he just, he's a prophetic musician, and so he's like, I'm taking those spiritual things, and I'm prophesying on my instrument, and he just came in, and it was just like so clearly the Lord, and so we, that, that song, like, it kind of has this front half focus almost, and then it leads up to this kind of prophetic declaration of the clouds dissipating, whatever. And so the, the song, we didn't think of like, okay, what's the catchiest way to arrange it? It's like, okay, here's the message of the song. And it's like the, the music prophesies of that. And then all of a sudden the lyrics give emphasis to it at the end. And so, you know, we really try to follow the, the prophetic themes over the what makes sense in a map. And, uh, you know, I love the... The music that does that, and I think even the best artists, that's true. They're not thinking like, okay, to be pop radio, you know, we got to get two lines for the verse, don't bore us, get to the chorus, and then, you know, it's got to be under three minutes, and like, they have like these formulas in mind, and I think, I think it's true of prophetic music, but all great music too, like I think music has a feel, and, and depending on what that feel is, like codes and maps and this, the typicals, like you just have to break those rules. And so for like that, that song, it was just that prophetic musicianship that led it. it I don't know if it would have worked if we're like, no, we should just have the music just like make something up. And it's like, we might've tried that and it wouldn't work and we go right to the bridge. But it was like, we, like we, that, that line, like Regan didn't write any chords or any lyrics or whatever. And so like Nashville would say like, okay, that's, you know, not a writer. Rachel and I are 50-50 split. Well, we gave, we gave Ray, uh, Regan a, a, uh, a third of the cut of the song. He didn't write a chord or a lyric, but we're like, man, that melody line was like just as much of a heart of the song. Like you're a writer on this song, bro. And uh, as a way, because I'm like, that music is just as important in kind of what it releases and, and what it does. And so follow those prophetic themes. And, and when you get in the studio and arrange, don't choke the life out of it. Like, w where there's life on something, no, no, you work around that. Don't be like, oh, let's, let's write something that fits. It's like, man, there's nothing worse than there's like a song that live. There's so much life on it. And then you're, they're like, hey, I recorded the song. And you hear it, and it's just like, because it's just flat. Like some producers that, yeah, anyway, I don't need to get in that note. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything about that. 
think it's really important to be aware of your of your rhythms because everyone has a structure. Everyone has a way they write. I love to be with, I love to be in a room with people that think complete the complete opposite of me. Like my brother Julian again. He's like the opposite. We're like he's I'm like more black. He's white. You know, it's like complete opposite. Um, but like being really intentional, like with production and song mapping, any little detail can either make or break the song. Too long of a space or too short of a space can either make or break a song. It's like, I, I carry the fear of the Lord with song because it's like everything kind of matters in the way you, I like, I, like, I like songs to feel like a composition instead of sections. Yeah. So it's like if I get a song and it's a really, really good song, I was like, but it feels sectioning. I was like, I was like, hey, is it cool if I help you write it a little bit? Or I'm aware of melodies, like people's ranges. You know, it's like a lot of times people have to duet a song because they wrote it because the bridge was too high. You know, so it's like, I'm aware, it's like, if that's intentional, it's awesome, but if, if it's not and it feels a little off, let's rewrite it, you know? But being really intentional with that and also how many choruses you do, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, it feels, when you do it live, we do it live all the time, we're like, we got to stay there a little longer. I'm like, okay, let's do two more choruses. You know, or it's like, it's really long, we should probably move on. Okay, let's cut some. So just being aware, and I even write it down, I'm like, I have a little notepad, like, let's, here, let's do this, until you get it right, so it feels like a composition, fully. Um, I think, well, in my, uh, what I've experienced, I think every song has a life of its own. So it will kind of, if you're writing a song, it'll let you know, uh, like for example, if you're writing a song and you're doing two or three choruses, it'll feel wrong to you, well, to me, that, you know, you should just do two. Because like a song, every song has um, a life of its own. So it'll let you know if you... Uh, if you're taking the wrong direction in terms of uh, where the song needs to go. It's like, well, I've written a couple of songs where um, it just felt good to do a verse, chorus, and a beat, and, and a bridge. That's true. And it, it felt right. I tried doing a second verse, and then, you know, it just tells you that, buddy, this is the wrong way. You need to go this way. So every song has, a, has its own life. So you have to pay attention to what the song is telling you. Jenny, can I say something to, to close us out? Yeah, Unless, because I, I think it's time's up. But I just, I just want it, to. It is right. Yes. Yeah. I just want to end by encouraging you, because you found yourself in a songwriting Q and A today, and you came because you are curious. You came because you're already a songwriter and you want some tips and tools. You came because you're a worship leader at your house and you want to form culture. There's there's a reason you came today, and I want to just encourage you, like we gave you some fun things that we know, but I think some of you in the room today need to hear that it's time to start writing. Yeah. You've been thinking about it for a long time, and you've been considering it, what this could mean, and the turn signal for you as a person, or for your church, or for your culture, but I think it's time to start writing. It's time to do what's in your heart to do. And sometimes when we talk about something that we're going to do, like, I'm going to start working out. If you talk about it a lot, your body, like, chemically actually gives you the release of positive, like, I did it, and we didn't do it. And so we talk about songwriting a lot. It, it, it kind of makes us feel good because we're like, ooh, we're talking about songwriting. But we don't do it. Like, it's time to start writing like we talked about like time it's time to make the time block it's time to send the text to the friend that you've been considering writing with it's time to start writing we need songs from you and so I just want to encourage you and maybe just end and I'm just gonna pray over you can I pray over you just to end this really quick Jesus, right now I just thank you for every individual in this room. God, I thank you for the churches represented here. I thank you for the songs that are going to come forth from the people in this room. And so, Father, right now I just pray that you would open wide the door, God, that you would um, just even open wide just even our yes that we would say yes to this. Those that are called, Father, I ask that you would help us, encourage us, God, but would we just begin the discipline of starting? God, help us start. We're just going to do it. Let's just commit right now. We're going to do it. We're going to write a song. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Thank you so much.